You say you want an evolution. Well, we know you don't want to change the world. You tell me you're afraid of revolution. Well, we know you don't really want to change the world. But when you say America's number one, we all know that that's only with a gun. I don't think it's going to be all right. No way, no way, no way.
here to say a couple Actually, things. The first thing I want to say is what people are doing here on Wall Street is fine, it's very good, and they deserve props for it. They are in the right place. There are horrors going on all around the world, all around the world, being caused by this rotten capitalist system, and Wall Street symbolizes the oppression and exploitation that this capitalist system is putting down on the world. So these people here are in the right place. Two. What are we going to do about all this bullshit that people are calling out? The, the wars, the corruption, the poverty, the starvation around the world, the way police brutalize people, including brutalizing people here at Wall Street. Two things we got to do. The first thing is all this misery, degradation, and brutality is built into the fabric of this capitalist system. And it's going to take revolution to get rid of it. And we in the Revolutionary Communist Party are building a movement for revolution. We're spreading revolution everywhere. We're bringing to people the leadership we have for this revolution in Bob Avakian, and we're rallying poor, determined fighters. What do people need to do who see the need for revolution? Well, look, if you see the need for revolution, or if you don't, you need to fight the power. When they do these foul things to people, you got to stand up and do something about it. you got to fight the power and transform the people for revolution. And this October is exactly what we're going to be doing. Cornell West and I have issued a call to stop, stop, and frisk. I mean, who revoked that part of the Constitution that protects people from unreasonable search and seizure if their skin happens to be black or brown? This is foul. It's no good. It's got to be stopped. Cornell West and I are going to be in the streets in October stopping it. We want you all to be there with us. We invite everybody here to get with us. Also, October 22nd is the National Day of Protest to stop police brutality, repression, and the criminalization of a generation. On that day in cities across the country, people are going to take to the streets in opposition to police brutality. I encourage everybody to be there too. Here in New York, it's going to be at Union Square in the afternoon. We want to talk with people about We want people to be there. So that's what I wanted to say, Carl Dixon, the Revolutionary Communist Party. Stop, stop, and frisk, and be out in the streets on October 22nd, the National Day of Protest to stop police brutality, repression, and the criminalization of a generation. Thank you. What's Code Pink? Code Pink is uh, anti-war. Anti-war? Yes. Why is it called Pink? You know, I'm just a supporter of theirs. I'm not from their organization. Oh, okay. But, um, it was in response to the invasion of...
access Joe called Revolting News. Okay. If you want to tell me what you're protesting about, tell me what you think should change. Um, well, what I think should change is that people should just start, like, being happy and not, like, chained to their money. You know what I mean? And yeah. I feel like that's what this is here, you know what I mean? Just a bunch of people who were just, like, pissed off about, like, the system or whatever. So they decided to just come here, just break away from that and show people that, you know what I mean? Like, we don't have to do that. We could do this, you know what I mean? We could be, you know, about something else, not about all that, you know what I mean? Right. That's why I'm here. What, you, what about a dollar? What I was saying basically to them earlier was that I believe that right now, because he was speaking about how they're, how they're manipulating the prices of gold and silver. Yeah. I believe that what's eventually going to happen is the American dollar is going to become completely worthless. Yeah. The paper dollars that we have, worthless. Yeah. You're not even going to be able to trade them in for yeah. the new currency that they're going to introduce because right. they will be, as paper, worthless. They'll be pieces of paper. Yeah. So eventually it's going to be about what you are going to be able to trade and what they're going to do. The reason why they say your possessions own you because what, what are you going to have to do eventually if you want to eat, yeah. you have no money, oh, well, you got to sell the car now. Now you got to sell the car to get $5,000. It may be worth, it may be a $60,000 car, but yeah. you're only going to be able to get $5,000 out of it because so many people are trying to sell the same car because so many people are out of money. Yeah. So basically, what they're going to be doing is they're going to basically be repossessing everything that you borrowed from them because what money is, what we know as currency currently, it is legal, it is debt. legal tender. It's legal basically, debt. it's debt. You're, you're basically only borrowing what you buy with the money. And what that implies is one, that the money does belong to the people in power. So they can do whatever they want with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like at the end of the day, now these are my beliefs. Right. These are my personal beliefs. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. It might not happen. It probably won't happen. But what I believe is that eventually the American dollar will become worthless. It's going to be about how much, how much, you know what I mean, valuable things you have. Like you were saying, gold and silver. Buy gold and silver. Invest in gold and silver. Your money out of those dollars, if you've got any money, Whatever you've got, they got a uh, when the when they had the bank bailouts, they overtook over one of the other banks who was shorting it. See, uh, yeah. 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 The name of our group is Socialist Alternative. First of all, we're a socialist organization. We're part of, uh, we're linked to an international that has socialist groups in about 35 countries around the world. Uh -huh. And in our view, uh, we think that working people and youth deserve jobs and education and health care and a better deal. And we're tired of Wall Street and big banks and big corporations dominating our lives, dominating the economy, having corporate politicians just bailing out the banks and leaving us uh, to, be, to be sold out. And and, um, and we want to organize a, a mass movement to fight uh, for, for the basic interests of working people, to stop the assault on working people, uh, to, to, to fight back against the policies of trying to make working people and youth pay for an economic crisis that we didn't create. Um, but we also think that the, there is no ultimate solution to this economic crisis, but as long as we have a for-profit system of capitalism and that we need to fight uh, to build a movement uh, to replace the society with a better one, and in my view would be democratic socialism, where ordinary working people democratically own and control the major aspects of the economy and can democratically come up a plan with society, uh, for society, uh, uh, that's based on human need and not on the profits, making profits for time. Thank you. My name is Ed Mahoney. They call me Uncle Eddie. Okay, this Uncle is my Ed. wife, Robin. We are the biggest thing that I think that come, can come out of this particular event is uh, to open a discussion about these issues. And oh, anybody I see doing so. We've been to a lot of rainbow gatherings. So yeah. I, I feel that element here, and that's why it's working. There's a lot of experienced road dogs where people go to distribute food, make people feel welcome. If they see someone acting in a way, they're going to say, brother, that's not how we Okay, do it, yeah, right? it's literally that's like right on. Basically, yeah. They make, they make it very difficult here, I think. But I see local kids who are poor and frustrated who have found their voice here, too, who are like taking their That's right. There's some of these workers around here. It's a nice conversation. It's got to resonate. It's got to resonate. And with our union coming on board, and I hope in a very soon.
serious way. Yes. The identification of unions and workers and the fight against Wall Street alongside youth that are, are rebelling against this rival system. That's right. Hopefully because this will come together. Unions. That is the foundation of our country. You educate the youth and you yeah. give people jobs. That's the only way this right. country works. That's the right. only way. That's right. I mean, it's, it's got to grow. I mean, who knows what the future brings, but it's got to grow. There's no way out of this crisis that even they without can talk about. Without taxing Yeah, without even no taxing way. the rich. No way. They can't, no, minimum, minimum tax. It's too much. So, I mean, we used to have a tax They don't, right now, they don't want to go from 34 to 36 percent. Right. They consider that an attack on their, they can t consider that class war. Yeah. For us to raise them 20 points less than they were 50 years ago. I was looking today at a, uh, an article by Paul Krugman in the Times, which uh, said that in the past 30 years or so, the, uh, the middle class, 24, the middle class, per se, has gained the wealth 24%, okay? But the 100th of the top 1%, 480% by comparison. And there are other numbers that are even are more interesting than a lot like that, about like what percentage of the wealth does the top 0.2% hold yeah. is something ridiculous. Oh, it is, it is. It's like a third world country. This is, but this is what has to happen. Yeah. There's no other way to no, affect the... No, no, you the, keep doing this, no matter how smart or stupid you are, you got to be able to figure out you can't pay your rent, right. you can't eat, you can't go nowhere, and of course you can't find a job. So, it's something's got to sink in. And when people see an institution of workers like unions stepping up right. and moving in the streets, challenging uh, the whole structure, this, this well, is where it, I need to what be. What it does is it ends the ridiculous dialogue of whether or not we should re-elect Obama. Yeah. Like, you know, come on. Like, why are we even talking no, this, about this? That? That's not, no, this, this, this is what counts. This is Obama what got more fun, more money from Wall Street than the game. You look at it. That's a fact. That's I researched fact. it. He the biggest one. Too. The biggest <laughs> contributor from Wall Street, and I think of any contributor, is Goldman Sachs. Obama, okay? That's why they survived. That's why they survived. Yeah. But, you know. but, but, the job is to win. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't do that at all doesn't win. Yeah. You still need someone in there who's righteous, who's intelligent, who cares about people. You need at least that. We have those elements in there. Those elements have never been in there in my lifetime. I've never had a righteous, intelligent yeah. president who cared about people. Not when Bill Clinton was president. Okay? He would not, Obama would not do to Rwanda what Bill Clinton did. This did man is him? righteous. Did you vote him in? Did I vote in Obama? Yes. Of course. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. All right. Did you vote for Obama? Absolutely <laughs> not. You didn't vote Absolutely for not. No. Say again? Well, I don't, I don't believe Jesus is going to run. I'm not right, waiting so. for a hippie to win. Right. I voted I'm for a socialist for candidate. Right. Yeah. Who shares some of my Party philosophy? of socialism and liberation. Right I never vote Democrat. It's not a who, ma who matter of... It's, it's not a matter of the personality or looking deep into their soul or looking at their eyes. It, it is...
Well, I, I think all of the issues, all of the issues, the, the, the foremost issues, of course, in the country right now is, is getting people to, getting people to work job. The foremost issue is getting Americans to work, getting jobs. Um, and that means getting the economy going. It means investing in the infrastructure. It means programs similar to how the economy was recovered in the 1930s and so forth. That's the number one issue. But the, all of the issues circling around, the, the big issues of housing, foreclosure, the inability of young people to, to, to get educated in an affordable manner. In New York City, um, the, the, the college system was free for 120 something years. Um, I remember participating in, in, in bitter struggles in the 1970s to defend the policy of open admission. Right? Um, that was in early 1970s, mid 1970s, during the Big Mac crisis in this city. Today we are graduating our children, if they graduate, they have. Twenty-five to hundred thousand dollars in debt tied around their necks before they have earned a penny, before they've even begun their working lives. That means that we are failed the next generation. We're the first generation of Americans that are failed the generation coming after us. It's more difficult for them to get into a home than my parents, than it was for my parents to buy it to get a home, and it's, it's, it is more difficult to get an education. That's a problem. That's a huge failure. Um, so, so I'm so I'm here in support of all of these issues, and I think that um, that if there were other other ways to channel the protests, um, then it would have it would have a more orderly form. But in the absence of a, of, cha of channels and in light of the re attempts to repress it, the overreaching, the over heavy-handedness. It's only going to lead, lead to an increase, and that's a good thing, quite far. Somebody protest, okay. So you wanted a specific solution idea? Yeah. Um, there's different things. I mean, sometimes I end up arguing for reformist things, like, well, we're going to keep capitalism, but we're going to tax the rich, and we're yeah. going to take money out of politics so that we can, as a group, as a whole, Someone just did limbo under your I know.
Yeah. I think the solution to this mess is for each of us to go into the voting booth with a list of write-in candidates that yeah. are not affiliated with any party, that are human beings that we have drafted yeah. amongst ourselves. We select people who are actual human beings who do not yeah. who have sold their soul to the banksters, the right. oligarch banksters that, I, as we all know, who runs the country. Right. And we, we haven't sold. We find people that are dedicated to humans.